Look who we have here. What is she doing here? Titles, titles, keeping tight circles. Oh, perfect timing, Eisen. I's got a letter for you. A letter? Did you get a reply to that letter you sent? What's it say? What's it say? I know everything that you've done. Repent for your horrendous deeds, you monster. Huh? What did you do, Eisen? No idea. There's no sender written on here either. Who would write something so awful? Wait, is that some her sister? I damn about other people's feelings. I wouldn't be a pirate. I suppose <laughs> that's true. Forget about it. What's the status of the other stuff? The Palmier made it just fine. But uh, we've run into some troubles finding the Nordals. My deepest apologies. What are Nordals? The what? Nordals used to be given out by Empyrean temples. If you collect a set of four, you'll find happiness. Or oh, so they said. Nowadays, there's only four left. Red, blue, green, and black. Even worse, nobody hardly knows nothing about them. Dolls of the Empyreans? Do you think they're like that one we saw of Aminoch in that shop in Isolt? Kind of. But these are less gloomy looking and more, uh... Hmm... How can I describe it? Something like a quiet radiance? A quiet radiance? <laughs> That's perfect! I... think I get it. I'd never have pegged you as a collector of religious claptrap, Eisen. Think they'll help keep the Reaper away? Probably not. But in the off chance they actually work, they'll keep her safe. Huh. Hey, that letter Eisen sent off earlier was addressed to a woman, wasn't it? <laughs> Our little Luffy said is growing up. N no, I wasn't implying she was his girlfriend. Her writing just seemed more mature, and. Yeah, it isn't him. <laughs> oh. It's nothing like that. She's my younger sister. I knew it. I didn't know you had a sister. She's the only family I have left. She and I live apart for various reasons. I'm guessing your death curse is one of them, huh? Mogilu! Hmm. Just one? So that's why. I'd be happy to help you look for those dolls, Aizen. Another oh, sequence? Yeah. Okay, then. Thanks. Actually, let me check something. Because I think I actually... I saw Ben and the other crew members get into a serious fight over whether cats or dogs were better. I don't get what the big deal is. I That's can't Twitter. believe you could say such a thing. No conflict <laughs> is more perilous than the one that has dogged mankind since the dawn of civilization. <laughs> In the shadow of every war are the battles of dog lovers and cat lovers. Between each side lies a divide. Maybe not all that deep, but unbridgeable all the same. I'd say we're lucky that the squabble you saw didn't escalate into anything more serious. <laughs> I had no idea it was such a big deal. So what side do all of you fall on? I am, without a doubt, a cat person. Cats and witches have a long history together. More like a fuck. Personally, I prefer dogs because they can cohabit with humans while following rules. But I like cats too, because they're cute. What about you, Rokuro? Shigure liked cats, so I don't. But I like dogs even less. <laughs> Always been wagging their tails for their masters. <laughs> I feel the same way. Dogs will trade anything for food. Learning tricks, wagging their tails, getting friendly. And in time, even forgetting to howl. I think that's too cynical. Dogs make efforts to please humans so that we can live together. They're friendly and compassionate creatures. Then does that make you a cat person, Aizen? Actually... I like squirrels best. <laughs> when I squirrels? lived with my sister, the nearby forest had lots of nice, fluffy squirrels that would let me pet them. This isn't about squirrels. It's about cats and dogs. You have to pick a side. <laughs> if I had to choose, yeah, it'd be cats. There's something lovable about the way they act, especially when you spoil them. It reminds me a lot of my sister. What about you, Velvet? Cats or dogs? Dogs. They don't betray you. <laughs> you always have to be so serious, don't you? So Velvet and Eleanor like dogs, while Mogilu and Aizen prefer cats. And Rokuro doesn't care for either one. 
That makes you our tiebreaker, kiddo. The fate of this showdown is in your hands. It is? Now that you're no longer the Abbey's dog, perhaps you're thinking of being one for Velvet's column? What has that got to do with anything? We're just talking about which animal we like. If you're getting so angry over this, he's going to have no choice but to pick dogs. I just told you... No more fighting! This is clearly getting out of hand, so why don't you all agree that you're bien foo people and make up already? And what makes you special enough to have bien foo people? Because I can be loyal like a dog, but also do my own thing like a cat. If you pick me, everybody wins. Nope. I don't think it works that way. Well, that was a skit. But uh, yeah, one other thing that I wanted to... I think I actually did add that treasure. Where is it? No, he say red, blue, black, and what was the fourth color? What is it? Key? Are you sure it's not a sword? Really? A Kingdom Hearts reference? Although I think that's me speaking. What? I'm kind of curious. Do I get a bonus collecting? Do I, did I actually collect all of the, this? Anyway. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What was I doing? Oh, yeah. Continue with the story. So let's see. How far we go? Then we back here. I guess a dragon was a bit much to take on, even for the Reaper. You should get some rest. We all should. I'll just get the crew started on readying the ship for our next departure. All right, you go do that. Luffy said, you should get some rest too. I'm fine. It's more important that I focus on finding an actual Therian this time. I'm going to take another try at sensing the Earth Pulse points. <sighs> She's Roy. Actually, I'm gonna surprise how emotional she gonna get. You're as stubborn as ever, Fee. Now we can self kill. Hey, Kurigane, let me they ask have, you something. They have sprite? Complaining, is it? Come on, don't be like that. Every time I turn around, Velvet or one of the pirates is telling me to go make some delivery to some island. I can never get a break. Isn't that just a sign they think you're a dependable guy? Maybe, but I don't see them sending you off on errands. It's like they take one look at your face and decide to leave you alone. I don't have a face. <laughs> oh, right. Sorry. The slip of the tongue. Maybe you just don't know how much work I do around here. It's more than you think. Anything to do with iron, I do it. Making tools, repairing things. What do you take me for? Some kind of cheeky freeloader? I don't even have cheeks. <laughs> You're too funny. But doesn't it ever annoy you to have all these kids giving you orders? I've spent my entire life thinking of nothing but forging swords. It's been centuries since I've interacted with youngsters like them. Kids? They can be a hassle. Uh -huh. But at Is least, he? it's a new hassle. Is he passing? Yeah, that's what I thought at first. So I went along with whatever they asked. But I've been too nice, so they keep pushing work onto me. Maybe if I hadn't been so helpful, they would have stayed out of my face like they stay out of yours. I don't have <laughs> a face. That's not the point. Aren't you even listening to what I'm saying here? You need to make up your mind. You and I got on this ship alongside these people who are putting themselves in great danger in order to live the lives of their choosing. If you don't like it, then go on and get off this ship with your tail between your legs. Yeah, except I don't have a tail right now. What was that? Where is it? What interaction was that? And I'm solo again. That was... I can't believe they actually have Sprite. Wait, who... What was her name? 
Koana, Coco, and Coco, I think was. How did I miss this one? Don't push yourself too hard now, Lafayette said. You hear me? I hear you. I just. I told everyone I could find the Therians, but I've only sent us to the wrong places. Aizen, is there any way to boost Amalok's powers? <sighs> I guess it's okay for me to tell you this. The majority of Malakim today have their consciousnesses sealed away to be used as mere tools for the exorcists. We know that. But originally, Malakim were beings who received prayers from people and in return bestowed their blessings upon nature and mankind. So you're saying that when humans pray to a Moloch, the Moloch receives great strength? Yes. In general, at least. Some Molochim, like me, buck the system and bring about misfortune rather than divine grace. Oh, that's unfortunate. But who would ever pray to me? Maybe you didn't lead us to any Therians, Faye. But it's not like we came back empty-handed. We found Ori Kalkum to use against Shigure. And we also learned we can hold our own against a dragon. Kinda. So where should we go next, V? She smiled. North Gand. There's a big earth pulse point north of Helavis. Works for me. Aizen? We can leave whenever you want. Doesn't matter to me. And I'm all set. Let's make our way to the harbor. When I say prayers, I don't mean outright worshipping. All I'm talking about are earnest thoughts and feelings directed at you. I see. So I'm already receiving prayers then. And now I have to... Whoa, that is a big club. How big can you grab? That... But that was something nice. Actually, how fast can I go? Next target is north of Helavis, near the Faldi's ruins. In light of everything we know, I'd say it's highly likely we'll find a Therian there. Let's hope! Then we should make our first stop, Port Helavis. With the, uh, mischief we got into last time, getting into the city might prove difficult. Benwick, how are things in Helavis right now? That shipping guild that used to handle our mooring is pretty much toast. But for some reason, the Abbey isn't watching the port as much as they once were. Unfamiliar ships have been hauling in relief supplies, so if we pose as one of the transport ships, I think we can slip in. And if we divert some supplies to an unofficial channel, we might be able to secure a new mooring partner. Smuggling in relief supplies for our own disaster. Cheeky bastards, aren't we? <laughs> it's what'll get us in. That much is true. It's a plan. Roger. I'll get right on it. Eleanor, Abbey exorcists don't pray to their tethered Malachim, do they? You mean something besides our oaths? An oath is a magical formula that grants you power in exchange for binding you to a rule, right? Yes, though that is simplifying it a bit. When Malachim receive human prayers, they bestow their blessings upon people in nature. Aizen told me that we Malachim grow stronger when humans pray to us. Prayers and blessings? I've never heard of that. I used to think the same way as the other exorcists. Malakim are merely tools that allow us the use of arts. Yeah, that's what I figured. But Inominat is different. The exorcists all worship him. They have faith in his mighty power. And not only that, the people of this nation pray to the Empyrean for salvation, just as Artorius instructs them. Ah, I get it now. See the wheels turning, do you, kiddo? Huh? Artorius founded the Abbey within the existing Church of the Empyreans, so that he could direct the people's thoughts towards Inominat. So that even while they lionize Artorius as their savior, they are made aware of Inominat's presence behind him. Everyone starts believing in Inominat. The prayers of the entire world go to him, becoming his power. After the centuries-long decline of Empyrean worship, 
he becomes stronger than anyone today could imagine. The pieces do fit. Oaths, prayers, blessings, the demon blight. So much in this world is affected by matters of the heart. They hold magical power, both effective and meddlesome. We are truly going up against the rest of the entire world, aren't we? Don't look so troubled, Eleanor. I'm gonna do my best to get stronger, so believe in me. I am a Moloch, after all. Oh, Luffy said. You've become so brave so quickly. Have I? But you're still cute when you get embarrassed. Hey, why is your face so red? Huh? My face isn't red. Hmm? Huh? Well, another skit. Hmm. Aizen with glasses? Hey, Aizen. What's it feel like to get a letter? I don't feel anything, nor do I want or need to. There's no joy in receiving these things. Huh? Huh? Why not? <laughs> don't be so shocked. Look, it's just an invoice from the Turtles. What's the big deal anyway? Do you wish you get letters too? Yeah. But I don't have anyone to send letters to. Let alone anyone who would send me any. Luffy said, I've got a letter for you. Huh? What? Really? Who could it be from? The sender is... Bienfu? Really? Yep, yep! You got a letter from yours truly! Bunny. I figured you'd be wanting someone to send you a letter right about now, so I wrote one up for you. What do you think? You're happy, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks, Bienfu. I'll even read it for you. Ahem. <clears throat> Dear Moloch Loppy Set, I hope that this letter finds you in good health and high spirits. Thankfully, I'm doing well myself, with no major changes to report. Bienfu's taking all this so seriously. It's so rare to actually see him like this. As you're aware, I've been spending my days ironing Mogilu's outfits, sewing her buttons, and washing her hat and tremendously long socks. Recently, however, I made the mistake of remarking to her that she might not have been quite as slender as she once was in her younger years. <laughs> she hung me upside down from the roof in the middle of the cold. I nearly became a frozen Norman sickle. When did that happen? So what the? That I couldn't stop my tears from flowing down my little cheeks. Bien. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's the Bienfu we know and love. But all you wrote about in that letter was yourself. And you even read it out loud yourself. That's okay. Thanks, Bienfu. It feels nice to get a letter. That's so kind of you to say. I think I might cry again. Bien! Well, that was a thing. But in other note. Hmm, should I give him? Yeah, maybe off screen. We've looted everything bound for hella V's. With that much trade, I doubt anyone will suspect us. Any idea who can give us cover for docking? Not anyone in particular, but recently the power and influence of the Helvies Fisherman's Guild has caught my eye. The Fisherman's Guild, huh? Let's bring them some extra relief supplies. Fuel, drink, and as for the drink... Twelve-year-old Amber Draft. The sailors of Helvies have an eye for the stuff. You heard that from Dial, I take it. He's got a sharp eye. He took a bottle in payments, but I say we turn a blind eye to it. We thought we were the best at this kind of thing, but having him around has been a real eye-opener. Okay, but tell him if he takes a second, he'll pay for it. Eye for an eye. Aye, aye. I'll keep an eye on him so that he doesn't sneak up with another bottle. The supplies are loaded. We can make for Helavis whenever you want. That was fast. If we weren't hard workers, we wouldn't be sailors. <laughs> Eleanor! <laughs> oh, what the?
What's wrong, Kamoana? She, uh, she said she had a dream about her mom. Oh. Uh. When mommy saw me, she said I looked scary. That she didn't want a scary little girl like me. <laughs> Your mother would never say that, sweetheart. But how can you be sure? Well, uh, how do I put it? I know because I know. You're just lying to make me feel better. <laughs> Aw, Kamawana, don't cry. I... <laughs> oh, this is the part I hate about little kids. I'm not a little kid! I hate you, Velvet! I hate That's you! That's right, let it all out. Wow. This scene, this I'm not, I didn't expect to see. She managed to cry herself to sleep. They're not rational creatures. Sometimes you just gotta let them cry it out. You seem used to it. I guess you could say that. Luffy usually kept himself together when he was younger. But when he was really little, he had times like this every now and then. Uh. And on that note, let's take off all we can. My liege, Dial, I leave Kamoana in your care. I'll do what I can, but kids as sweet and honest as her are harder to deal with than corrupt bureaucrats. An outlaw prince and a talking lizard are no replacement for a mother. Wow. And can you imagine that El Nichi this satellite, you know, pirates and kind of bad guys, but of course these things evolve. And did we... Oh, this place. It's been something. I do hope Kamalana isn't crying anymore. Yeah. Shush. How long is it going to be before you send in another exorcist to replace Lady Teresa? With these demons clamoring at our gates, none of us feel safe anymore. You have our deepest sympathies, but we were sent here on a different mission. That's what the last exorcist who came here said before leaving for the north. What could be up there that's worth all that attention? Surely we're not all being punished by the Abbey for what happened with Medissa, are we? Oh. That is not the case. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have business to attend to. She sounds kind of familiar. So the exorcists are just passing through town and heading straight north. Odd. Ever since the Calamity showed up, everything's just gone to pot, I say. Calamity? What do you mean? I mean the demon who barged in and made a mess of our fair city. She's a nasty creature of pure evil, with an arm that eats anything that gets in her way. Haven't you heard of her? The Calamity's been rampaging across the whole kingdom, not just here. Scant few have seen her and survived. Huh. You don't say. After the Calamity raised our ships and our port, the shipping guild fell apart, and our trade routes got poached by other ports. It's bad. The town relies on trade to make ends meet. People are abandoning the city, and our streets are no longer safe. Not to mention the demon blight spreading again. Just the other day, a little kid turned into a demon. Just like that. What a world. What a world. What have the exorcists been doing during all of this? Well, Lady Teresa was in charge of this region, but she came up short against the Calamity and got a fat demotion for her troubles. 
Several new exorcists have been reassigned here, but once they arrive, they all traipse right off to the ruins up north. This has to be Medissa's fault. If she hadn't gone and done something so stupid... Medissa... That's enough. This isn't something for outsiders to know. You're right. Sorry. <sighs> I'm really worried about what's going to come of this town. It sounds like Helovis isn't what it used to be these days. We need to ask around and find out more about what's going on here. Agreed. Especially regarding the Abbey and those ruins. I'm also curious about this Medissa woman. The ruins part makes sense, since the Earth Pulse Point might be there. But why do you care who Medissa is? Just a hunch. Something tells me she's worth looking into. You're not gonna look into this calamity chick? She sounds like a real terror. Yeah, I think I'll pass. I already know plenty about what makes her tick. Spoiler? What's kid is this? Are you all right, Madam Eleanor? Don't let those people get you down. I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. Uh, but could you not do that thing where you blow air on me to dry my tears? All right, I'll just pat your head then. That won't be necessary either. But really, things are in a terrible state. The town burned, the guild ruined, the abbey all but gone. It won't be a functioning port for some time. You can't fault them for being upset. They had it real good here until we came along. Those Helovisians were like spoiled children. How so? Helovis was once a tiny fishing village. The bountiful northern seas provided plenty enough fish to sustain their trade. But Flamestone gave them an easy way to get rich. And once they got a taste, they abandoned their old craft. And now they're paying the price. But I've heard that the cooling temperature has covered half the northern sea in ice drift, making fishing much more difficult. Uh, but the drifting ice carries tiny organisms, enriching the waters where it melts. The fish should be more plentiful than ever. I suppose you may have a point. We're ones to talk after what we did, but taking the easy path, then complaining as soon as it gets hard, that seems... Spoiled, yes. <laughs> you said it, Laffy said. I think my appetite's getting a little overindulgent, too. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. Just means you're healthy. Giant squid come to these waters in this season. Should I ask Benwick to fish some up? Yeah, and some normal octopuses, too. <laughs> Another skit coming. This calamity is us, isn't it? Well, Mix we've been waging war with the Abbey everywhere we go, and now we're about to take it to a new level. If we pull the next Therian off of the Earth Pulse point, it'll likely be Kamoana's village all over again. The same devastation? Ooh! I wonder if there's something worse than calamity that they can call us! This is no laughing matter. People turn into demons in part due to their own malevolence. It's not like they're entirely innocent. But if there's someone out there who's being forced to act as Inominat's mouth, like Kamoana was, isn't saving them the right thing to do? I cannot argue with that, but... You don't have to worry. I'm the one who will devour the barrier. And I'm the one who will do what needs to be done. The demon attacks have ground trade to a halt. But people are slowly starting to fish again. Are you a fisherman too? I... This town got swept up in the recent trade boom. But back when I was a young lad, this was a fishing port through and through. Ever since the shipping guild took over the docks, all of us fishermen got muscled out. Making this a commercial port has helped the town grow. But a lot of people weren't so happy with the guild. It's too bad everyone couldn't just work together. Once money gets involved, people change. That's true no matter what age you live in. The people know it's the ones making the money who lead the charge. But we follow anyway. It's human nature. I hope everyone changes their minds once we start rebuilding. But who knows what will happen.
Hey, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Sorry, I'm busy. Try someone else. <sighs> Excuse me. My name is Eleanor, and I'm an exorcist on patrol with the Abbey. I was wondering if I could solicit your honest opinion about how this town is being run. Oh, I didn't realize there was an exorcist with you. Yes, please tell the Abbey we want Lady Teresa back. Her governance was strict, it's true, but at least we could live in safety. Now, all the exorcists run off to the Faldi's ruins and leave us here in the lurch. They value some dusty, faraway ruins over the lives of the good, hardworking citizens here. It's just wrong. We've always been cooperative with the Abbey's demands, and now this is what we get in return. I... I see. The Abbey appreciates your, uh, candor. Shut up! your comments on to my superiors. Okay, we're gonna be back. Maybe in a few days. So, yeah. You, son? Huh? Hello?